Joe Biden, the former vice president, backing off the campaign trail, the presumptive Democratic nominee facing questions over his campaign as he remains bunkered down, hunkered down in his basement. Biden denying that he's in hiding, saying he's still campaigning safely from home. Joining me now is former White House press secretary, Fox News contributor Sarah Sanders. Good to see you, Sarah. What do you make of this? Does it, I mean, how does he cope with once he gets back out, potentially, uh, as the months wear on? What happens? <laughs> uh, look, it's easy for Joe Biden to hide in his bun basement bunker and launch attack after attack against the president. It's much harder to actually lead the country in a time of crisis like the president has been doing. He's been focused on saving lives and saving livelihoods. And I don't think the contrast could be any clearer for Americans as they go to vote in November. Do they want a strong leader who is capable of leading in a time of crisis? Or do they want somebody who's tucked away, hiding in their base? Um, I think that's why most Americans trust President Trump far more than they trust uh, Vice President Biden to lead and rebuild our economy after this is all over. Kelly? Yeah, you know, uh, Sarah, I was wondering, uh, do we think that the news that Joe Biden was in on this meeting uh, about Michael Flynn that Obama had with Susan Rice, Sally Yates, a bunch of other figures, is that going to become an issue for him in the election? Look, I think there are a lot of things that are becoming an issue for Joe Biden. And one thing is very clear is there is a uh, certain level of corruption that we're seeing unfold more and more. But that we're also seeing a double standard play out in the media. And I think people are starting to finally wake up and try to hold him accountable. I've been saying for almost three years, one of the best decisions that President Trump ever made was to fire James Comey. Comey was a liar and a leaker, and he disgraced the FBI by trying to overturn the 2016 election results. He couldn't take down the president because he had nothing on him. So instead, he tried to go after everybody around him like General Friend. He was a disgrace. It was a great decision for the president to get around to get rid of him. And now we're seeing how many people were involved in that corruption. I think that um, Attorney General Barr and the team over there have uh, done a remarkable job of bringing some of these things to light, as well as certain members of Congress. And I hope they'll continue to do that and vindicate the president and his decision further to get rid of James Comey and to fight back against all of the outrageous mm -hmm. allegations and ridiculous witch hunt that they spent years wasting against the Sarah, president. Sarah, I've, I've wondered aloud, though, who told President Trump to keep Jim Comey on in that job anyway? The Wall Street Journal had been writing about Jim <laughs> Comey and his self-serving behavior. Literally for years. They warned President Obama about appointing him the FBI director and, and wrote an op-ed in January saying regrets he'll have a few, but they suggested that the biggest regret President Trump would have was keeping Comey on in that job and voila. <laughs> you know, one of the things I found so interesting um, during my time at the White House is that everybody in the country, Democrats included, and the media, as you mentioned, thought that James Comey shouldn't be the director of the FBI until President Trump fired him. And then they all thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe you would fire James Comey, despite the fact that many of them had been calling for his firing long before the president even took that action. It shows the hypocrisy and it shows that the Democrats and the liberal media care more about destroying the president than making good decisions and good policy. And that was never more evident and more clear during that time, uh, immediately after James Comey had been fired. I, I want to stay on the a, a new controversy in the case against Michael Flynn and an unusual move. A federal judge in Washington, D.C. is now going to allow outside parties to weigh in on the former National Security Advisor's case. This delays the Justice Department's efforts to drop charges against Michael Flynn, his lawyers now opposing the move. Again, there was the violation of the Brady Rule, where prosecutors did not turn over potentially exculpatory evidence. De Mueller did not disclose the interviewing FBI agents at the time, did not think that Flynn had lied about a phone call with the Russian ambassador. Uh, Flynn did not know that there was no in 
or is defense team no investigative evidentiary basis to justify the interview? And in terms of this, um, this judge, I, I just wanted to point out something that goes back to 2018. It was from a Washington Post article in December of 2018, where the judge, um, Judge Sullivan, told Flynn he, quote, arguably sold his country out and he couldn't promise him a sentence that involves no jail time. Sullivan ultimately allowed the sentencing to be delayed until he learned more about Flynn's cooperation with Mueller and in other DOJ cases. What is this judge up to, Sarah? Uh, look, I your guess is as good as mine as um, what this judge is up to. Uh, I'm not an attorney. I won't even try to pretend to play one on TV. I think what we know for a fact and what we know is clear is that there was the highest level of corruption going on at the FBI. They tried to set up Michael Flynn, and now we're learning more and more every single day just how far and wide that level of corruption is. I'm glad that we have an attorney general that's finally standing up and saying, not on my watch. This isn't going to continue. Continue. We're going to look into this and we're going to make sure that we find uh, exactly where this started and how far and wide it went. When we also have uh, Director of National Intelligence Rick Grinnell de declassifying the names of the people who unmasked Michael Flynn, something that is just a complete violation of uh, American citizens' rights. But that will th that information will also go directly to the federal prosecutor John Durham, who is looking into the origins and predicate of the Russia investigation and why and and the who revealed his identity. That's part of the probe, as well as the leaks to the media. Absolutely. I think um, Acting Director Grinnell has done a fantastic job of being aggressive and really going after, again, the origins of where this ha started, how far and wide, providing that information so that people like Durham and Barr and others involved can really get to uh, the beginning of all of this and just how many people were involved and how uh, corrupt they really were under Director James Comey. Sarah, good to see you. Be well. Stay Great safe. Great to see you. Thanks for having me.